Join us as we disembark on the adventure of a lifetime. Travelling in a Subaru Brumby and Jeep Wrangler, we travel from Adelaide to Coffin Bay, then from Coffin Bay straight up the centre to Birdsville. We're joined by Jaden and Ebony, and the old camera woman Pico. Food will be consumed, and plenty of fuel will be bought as we disembark on this adventure. Time to hit the road. So after travelling through Port Wakefield, we stopped at this little information centre on the York Highway. Do -do 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 -do. Pretty cool little setup, there's a toilet. Jaden pretended to read a map, he had no idea where we were. Then he gave his pet bush chook a pat on the way out. Now to head south, straight down the York Highway. We're heading to Yorktown, but we're going to stop at a few coastal towns along the way. some spectacular views of the farmland straight out to the ocean. I forget how much this tries to break my wrist on corrugations. For our 100th fuel stop, we met this bloke, he was awesome, loved the Brumby. So we're heading north to Port Augusta to set up camp for the night. Pico really earning that money for filming. Great quality. Oh, there we go, that's one's better. So we set up camp here in Port Augusta for the night because we're scared of getting stabbed by someone on the side of the road. No, Jaden doesn't eat an onion but proceeded to oh, show us how onion? to cut yeah, up an onion well. yeah. and nice. cook spaghetti. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really thought that Sheila was naked walking behind that then. Holy sh**. <laughs> <laughs> so we're up bright and early, ready to leave Port Augusta to head to Coffin Bay. White Church Mouse Brumby woke every single person up at camp and it took Jaden about five attempts to put his trailer on. So let's roll out and see how long it takes to get to Coffin Bay. Thank you for that insight Jaden. So we had to pass through Whaler, which was the scariest town I've ever been to. But it was worth it. Look at the views of Coffin Bay. Absolutely beautiful across the oyster fields out into the bay. We didn't really see anything else in the town other than this. 
Is that exhaust or it's been hot? Yeah. Looks like it's hot, doesn't it? <laughs> looks like it's sagging deep more. Really? Yep, that's completely f on. It's the stop of sand, but I don't want to put it in here. Then we might just put, go wait, wait till we get to camp and then f I'll put a shaft in it. And then we've done a thousand k's and then we've only got one spare shaft left. I think I've got spare boots, I'll have to rebuild one. Thank you, Brum Jerry. Yeah, it might get sand in it. While drowning my sorrows with ginger beer, it was time to stop for lunch before heading to the pool campsite. CV's exploded. Why? This side. Ah! Yeah, out of boots or f***ing. Oh, okay. Sharp hasn't exploded. I guess I'm not the boots. I think I'm going to run it to a copper bay and then fix it with so But then I've only got one spare. I'm going to have to rebuild that one. You got any boots or? I've got two boots, but I don't know if they're front or rear. Make fit. So after lunch we decided to head straight down to the pool campsite. Now we were very disappointed with how much bitch-o there was. We were getting worried that it was going to be bitch-o the whole way. I was quite shocked that the pool campsite is two and a half hours from Coffin Bay. We were wrong. Straight away, just straight into rough. Neutral. 
So because of the rocks and soft sand, we decided it was time to lower our tire pressures down. The only thing is I've never used one of these quick deflators and mine sucked. Just double tank. It's like driving a flare. I wish I did that earlier. Fuck this ride, it seems nice. Looks like a fucking ride, and I was just washing the tide. <laughs> This was giving me a massive arm pump. It was a mission to try and hang onto it. The manual steering does not do me any favours. It keeps trying to tear the steering wheel straight out of my hands. You don't have that much power, come on now. <laughs> Mate, I've got 75 horsepower. Don't <laughs> <laughs> stop now. Nah, it's pretty hard ground, the whoops are getting me. Might be hard for you, oh well, what the f***ing do that? Fuckin' hell. Reckon check how deep the water is, or just go through it? You weigh a bit less, you might float, so... <laughs> ah, fuck it. Just <laughs> end it, eh? That smells like sh**. Furbish? Very. Firm again? Yeah, it's deeper than it looks too. Put it down to it. That one scared me. Fuck, that was deeper that was than I thought. For me, that, one. Yeah, that second one scared me. It was deeper than I thought. <laughs> Turn. Yeah, a little bit. Just go straight and give it all. On the hops, top's hard. <laughs> yeah, they're annoying. They're hurting me spine. It's fucking double bouncing me because of the trailer. <laughs> I envy that Jeep being coil and solid axle and having power steering. It must be a lot comfier to drive. There's also some baby bush chooks too. Don't tell Jacob there's bush chooks there. If you know, you know. Too soon. I think it's stop. When the blow off? Only just, just coming out of those trees. Man. Oh. oh it could be worse getting on a seat there. Oh, what? <laughs> well, <laughs> technically, we have. You just haven't fixed it, so. Not yet. I used to always use that battery. Yeah, that rattle gun with about 5,000 extensions to yeah, their gearboxes. Yeah. It should be strong hands. These fucking batteries make heavy though. Fuck yeah. It gives us some balls though. Yep. Scary you doing that. Well, I'm not taking the thing out, so. Would you block a wood? Yeah. I trust it. So with Mechanic Steve's tyre repair done, it was time to hit the road again, entering the beach phase. This was soft as. This is Sandy's Jade coming. Found this little track at the top, but it was worse. I think we should stay down there. <laughs>
These ones are a bit shit. So after Pico scratched all the non-stick coating off the grill, it's time to get into the repairs. Jaden popped his airbags and we still have to fix this shaft. So it's time to cue the music. <laughs> Fucking grab it, please. It's heavy. I'm I can't lift it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Why is it so heavy now? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. I don't know, I can't fucking see it at all. It Where's it gonna go? Yeah, push it up. Yeah, get it in, quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Quick, just put the nut on it. Yeah, that's on it. Both sides? No. Quick, put it on, the ants are crawling on me. You know what, you got it? Yeah. Why the fuck was that so. Ah, they're fing biting me. Yeah, that's what I'm Why the fuck was that so fucking heavy? <laughs> He'd be fair in the face. <laughs> I really don't know why that was so heavy. I think it's time for a Jeep Gladiator or Hilux. So tonight I'll be cooking a bit of a delicacy, pretty fine buffalo wings, courtesy of Pretty Fine Hotel. 
Denise told me the secrets and made me some sauce. Go check them out if you're ever in pretty porn. Tell them that Angry Engineer and sent you. The old fat kept getting a bit cold, so we just kept chucking more fire around it. That's why she thought it was spicy there. So now I hand them over to the sous chef to put some beautiful sauce on them. Delicious. They are the best buffalo wings in the entire world. Now it's time to sink some tins and then off to bed, ready for tomorrow. So I've got Jade and Ebony to bake Grace up about getting up early to see the sunrise. But little did she know it was just a ploy to, for me to propose. So it's our last day at Coffin Bay, so we thought we'd go to Point Sir Isaac for a bit of a squiz. It was quite rocky. This had probably 12 inch rock steps. 12 inches is enough for any man. Is that the best crawler? <laughs> views here were extraordinary. Sir Point Isaac is probably one of the best bits of scenery I've ever seen in my life. Feels like you're at the edge of the world. Well, technically you're at the edge of Australia. So. By the time ending at Coffin Bay, it was time to pack up and head off. Hopefully we can beat high tide, and hopefully the beach isn't too soft.
The big bad Brumby wasn't heavy enough for the Jeep to winch off, so we ended up winching off this bit of washed up ship. I decided to move the Brumby forward, but then he got blocked. We disconnected the trailer off the Jeep and then managed to pull the Jeep out with a winch. Now it's just a matter of removing the bogged Brumby and then fetching the trailer. Good, okay, now it's just the trailer. Now by this point, Jaden had a lot of sand in his vagina. We did all find it very amusing. Apart from Jaden. With Jaden's delicate touch, he managed to lift the trailer up and get it back on the back of the Jeep. Then it was a race against the clock to get out of here before nightfall.
finally hit that bitch out again. It's time to pack up our sand flags, air up, and then head for Tumby Bay before dark. This is the end of our south trip, and now it's time to head north to Birdsville. No more coast and into the desert. So after a well-rested night in Tumby Bay, we ended up heading to Cowell to wash our clothes while Jaden headed to Wyala to get a couple of tyres fitted to the trailer. We met back up in Port Augusta to get some fuel before heading to Mullaloo Station for the night to camp. We followed this railway most of the way up. It was unreal seeing some of the views heading up to the Flinders Ranges. the landscape changed from forest to desert. We also saw the Pitchy Ritchie rail station and there was a Pitchy Ritchie station up further up the road. We stopped in Hawker for a bit of fuel. We thought this was dear at $2.40 but it did get a lot dearer. After another cheeky ginger beer, it was time to hit the road again. Head further into the wilderness. The amount of ruins on the side of the road were incredible. I'm not really sure what any of the houses, or if they were houses, but there's a lot of them on the side. through another station to get into Mooloo. We finally made it to camp and that was it for the night. We set up camp, sunk some tins, ready for tomorrow. Well, the Brumbies fucked another CV shaft. We're up to two for 1400 Ks. literally just going inside the boot now and wrapped around the shell. And I can't find Blueberry white chocolate fudge. That was funny. That was pretty banger that was. I'm not sure because it, it did that when we went back. <laughs> <laughs> so back on the road we head into Moodaloo actual homestead so we can sign the book and get a bit of internet for the drive out, work out where we're going. Oh, there's a couple of different tracks. Sometimes they're closed. So that comes up from Marie. Mm. And that goes around like that, or you can go this track here. Birds are inside track. Which is only closed if it's flooded. We can have a look at it if we, we can have a look. Because I reckon that'd be more exciting, but um Yeah. Cause, yeah, we can do that one. It looks shorter. I actually think it's only the same distance, but Yeah, we'll see what happens. That's sort of the last place. 
Yeah. We'll probably get fuel. But yeah, we can turn off there and then set up there. Which yeah. it might be worth doing anyway and then um ready to kill it. Mm. Hey so I'm getting a bit nervous, we're not gonna have enough fuel for the journey. So we stop in Lee Creek for a bit of a top up and then head to Mari. Jaden's Jeep's doing about 250Ks to a tank. We're just under 400Ks to a tank. Yeah, it looks about as the same as when we left. Also, I don't know where the cop shop is here either. It's not the sign. I don't know. There used to be like a um, chalkboard outside and you'd write your name and shit on. Yeah. And you're expected to time it to move them. And if you didn't sign it off on the other end, they'd send out a fucking third party. Okay. Yeah, the shaft is fucking hot. Yeah, it's very, and it's, pre it's pretty loose. <laughs> I've got like one bar of 4G at my house. Yeah. Here I have four bars of 4G. Probably have 5G. <laughs> what we do four hours today, four more hours after lunch, gets us there about like gets us to stop about four o'clock. That's cool. Well Cooper's Creek, Cooper's Creek's not that far away. I think that's the place we were thinking of. Yeah. We've got fuel and shit. Yes. Yeah. Either way, the whatever it's called. I should yeah. make it all the way to Birdsville with the fuel I've got. Yeah, I'm going to put fuel in here before we leave. Oh, you know, I'm putting fuel in here. And then, um, I'll shoot right there. My only thing is that shaft is going to explode at any point. If it explodes, I reckon it's going to punch the head. But, uh, yeah, a lot of one in here. I'd rather if we get to camp early than I'll do it. Yeah. So let's go to the pub for a cheeky feed before we go. This was a pretty sick pub, the old Mari pub. It was a very good feed. They had camel burgers, which we were too scared to try because I didn't want the trots in the car in the drive home. Oh, here we go. That might have been yeah, it. That's good. There's no more blackboard at the cop shop. Unleaded. Unleaded here was $2.90 a litre. It hurt a lot. It'd be rude not to get a cheeky photo in front of the Burzil track sign on the way out. The track was open, thank God. I don't know what we would have done if it wasn't. Fingers crossed we make it to Cooper's Creek for the night, otherwise I'll be doing a shaft on the side of the road. So far we've seen a couple of cars go past, but not too many. So we found this little campsite on the way to Cooper's Creek. It's quite cool, it had a little pool, amenities. While we're here I decided to use Jaden's water and give the old shaft a bit of a cool down because it was getting very hot. The vibration through the car, it was going to explode very shortly. Now if you use any of the amenities, do not forget to put a donation in the box. It just helps maintain everything and they put it out here for you, so the least you can do is donate it. Or shit in the bushes. So we worked out that the shafts kept getting destroyed because the steering shaft cuts the boots off them and then they run out of grease and destroy them. 
So it can get engine mounts when I get back to Adelaide, but for now, I'm not putting another shaft in it just to watch it get ruined, so I'm just gonna cut this one off and then run it as a stub and just run rear wheel drive. The flies were like torture out here. They were everywhere. So we just give this shaft a bit of a haircut, make it a stub axle, and then we're just gonna run it in. I think I'd be very quick at doing this by now. Then Jaden set up his movie theater for the night and we settled in. So early morning start, ready to head into Birdsville. But on the way there, we stopped at a few ruins and had a bit of a sicky beat. They must have just made houses a lot better back then. There's half of them always still standing. Had to take some pictures of the Lake Air Basin. And also the Birdsville track sign because why not? So we stopped at this pub for fuel, they have a bit of a servo. I cannot pronounce the town that it's at. Fuel was $3.05 there, but the pub was awesome as. Had probably the best egg and bacon roll I've ever had in my life. But it was time to hit the reality of driving a rear wheel drive Brumby up the third wheel track. was just getting worse and worse. The corrugations were getting wilder and deeper. It was just shaking the poor car to bits. My spine fell out my bum hole. The scenery altered from vast deserts to sand hills, just to absolute nothing. The closer we got to Birdsville, the better the roads got. They smoothed out enough that we could even sit at 100 km an hour. We made it across the border into outback Queensland, only a few k's from Birdsville. The rear wheel drive Brumby made it. Cannot believe how well it's done, doing over 2,500 k's to get here. My back on the other hand is shagged and so is my shoulders. the pub. <laughs> so we're in outback Queensland, middle of nowhere, and there's a van selling HSPs with Holy Trinity. It was the greatest moment of my entire life. So with the races done and dusted, it was time to head back to the camp to enjoy a beautiful sunset out in the desert. The Brumby taken a beating, but it was still alive. It done absolutely exceptional to make it here, to make it this far, to say the least.
It was time to get ready to leave early in the morning, which we thought would be an easy ride home, but it was not. The Brumby had more issues than we anticipated. Fuck it! We got home in about 12 and a half hours just to discover that the thermo fan had fallen off and it hit the belt and started melting it. It also broke off the battery clamp and the bolts for that are just now missing. The headlights broke in its mounts. The number plates tried to fall off and I cable tied it back on. The grill also broke all its bolts out and now it's cable tied on. The indicators are about to fall out of the bumper, there's no bolts left in them. The bumper has broken the mounts and it's about to fall off. I don't know what that was. It was great catching up with Jaden. Haven't seen him for about 18 months. It was a pleasure to meet Ebony. Can't wait to plan the next trip. If you got this far through, like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. Sounds like a fun thing. Happy birthday. There we go. What's in it? It's just wood. It's a stick. It's just a stick with tin foil. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Gretch. Happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. A bit? Hooray! A bit? Hooray! Hooray. Quick blow the candle. Hooray.